So um, the one first thing we're going to do is actually talk a little bit about the actual period instruments. What I have here is a reproduction of an Amati. So this is my Baroque violin, which was made in 2007. And of course, my modern violin was made in 1703. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, ex we'll explain how that works later. But these instruments, um, you know, I don't want to go into a lot of technique, uh, uh, technical discussion of how they're constructed. But they're to be played with this bow, which you can see does not have any camber. It has a pretty thin playing strip of hair. And it's designed to be um, an instrument that you don't hold, there's no shoulder, and there's no chin rest. So it's balanced here, and it's an instrument that's designed to be very resonant in this beautiful 18th century ballroom. <laughs> So that note in an 18th century courtroom would resound. OK, um, and you want to talk about your cello? Yeah, so my, my cello is actually from 1770. Um, went through a process of being modernized for today. And then when I got my, after I had had my hands on it for a number of years, I restored it to its original setup. So it's been through quite a lot. Um, <laughs> you'll notice the main, probably the main feature is there's no end pen, right? So when I play it, I make a basket with my legs and sit and just rest it. And what happens is that um, the, the, if it's anchored into the floor, you have, it's a much more solid um, approach. And, and when it's anchored into the body, there's a lot of give. And so what happens is, is when I bow and I play, there's a lot of information that I'm getting here tactilely with my hand and the reaction of the string because there's this give in my body. So there's just a lot of information that I'm getting that I lose when it's out here attached to the floor. And I think it's similar on the violin. Yeah, what happens, you discover when you play this instrument, which you realize, of course, this was the, the technique playing these instruments was the genesis for all modern schools of violin playing. So if anybody is interested in, in studying and learning how to play the historic instruments, I can guarantee you it will only improve your modern playing. So don't be afraid of it. It's really the, it is the source of all the great things that you do as modern players. Um, but what you discover is that you actually become, I think, more of the mechanics of the machinery of the actual instrument. So that there really is a sense that the bow starts here, but the best part of the bow is from here to here. And so you're using a lot more of this machine in the design of the bow. And it's uh, really about making the sound production is really more about just arm weight rather than pressure. If you press the instrument and try and force the sound, it's going to squish it. So and the other thing that happens, what, there's a whole kind of palette of what we call bowing vocabulary. And one of the first things that we discover is what we call multiple bow gestures. So the bow, which is, ha is lighter and obviously lighter at the tip, is easily rebound. So like when you drop a ball on the floor, the floor hits it back, but it's not a separate gesture. So the down and the up become a single gesture. And so when you see, and you see two eighth notes on the page, if we're used to clinging down up, it can be one of the first things you discover in Baroque music that it's really one note with a rebound. And that then gets compounded. It can be three, et cetera. So I think what 